Hello there. Good morning. How are you? Are you doing good? You're doing great? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Yay! It's another day God has made and we're in it. If you see it, <laughs> it's time to take my meds, y'all. It's time to take my meds. So, here I have in my right hand, I have Genvoya. This is for HIV. And I have Cymbalta for depression, anxiety, and pain. Genvoya for HIV. Cymbalta, depression, anxiety, and pain. Fight. <laughs> All right. That was that. I took my meds and I got something to read to you. You ready? You want to hear it? Open your ears. Get that wax out so you can hear it. Okay. I'm in 2 Corinthians, right? Chapter 5, Awaiting the New Body. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built from human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed but clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God yes God who has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home, in the body, or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, we're going to be judged. So that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Yes. I want to go home eventually. I want to go home. That's for God. Okay? That's why I want to go. So that is the awaiting the new body. So that's all I have for you today. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That wasn't a whole chapter, but that was like the first paragraph. And that was verse 1 all the way through verse 10. Okay? So no, that wasn't a whole chapter. But it was 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 through 10 that's what that is and there's more to read more to come all right remember what we are responsible for our own action see ya so here i was reading more of the bible and eating my breakfast and just marinating on the words that i was reading sorry about the light the glare it was awful, but hey, I still got the job done. Reading, reading, reading the word. I was watching Mr. Mima, one of my favorite YouTubers. So I'm just here, just here watching my favorite YouTubers. And land here with my dog. This girl don't never want to leave my side. Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Are you doing good? You're doing great? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome sauce. Okay, you know what time it is. It's mad time. Stop it. <laughs> All right, so in my right hand, I have Genvoya for HIV. And in my left hand, I have some Balta for depression, anxiety, and pain. Here we go. Genvoya. 
Simbalta. Jinvoya. Simbalta. Jinvoya. Simbalta. Yeah. Jinvoya. Simbalta. Yeah. Okay, let me stop playing. <laughs> if y'all hear that noise, it's a baby and it's a dog. Mm hmm. That's what it is. It's a brand new baby. I do have something. Let me let me say the prayer for today. I don't know if I read this to y'all or not, but here it is. Here it is. I did say that, yeah. Father, thank you for all the people you have placed in my life. Thank you that I can stand in the gap for the ones who are down and need my faith, my prayers, my encouragement. Help me to have a heart of compassion and to be a lifter of others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. I just took my meds, and I took my other meds. Not in front of y'all, but I just took my other meds. But you know what I come on. Huh? I come on here to tell you it's all right. It's okay. I'm living fine with HIV. But it's it's all right. It's okay. I'm living fine living with HIV. Hey, what's up? What do you want? <laughs> you in the camera. Smile. You in the camera. Smile. You in the camera. Smile. Okay, get out of my way. Move. Move it, reduce it. Before you lose it. Okay, bye, y'all. That's all I had to say. That's the dog whining right now. But that's it, y'all. Remember what? You equals you. are responsible for your own actions. See ya. So now I'm separating my medication in my pill separator, which is two weeks worth. And... I do this every two weeks to make sure and to remind myself when it's time to take my meds and make sure I take it every, 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 every day. People have been doing that for years, but only the people really, really willing to push the envelope. But now more people are getting into it. I, I, I would love to sell it. I could possibly try and sell it. Um, I had it at the breakfast boys. This restaurant me and mommy went to. Yeah, chicken sauce. Hey, thank you. So here I am again, taking my meds on another day, another day, another day. Yep, yep, yep. Here I am trying to do something to this head of mine. I get tired of getting up every morning doing this hair. Because it's so hot down here in Georgia. Oh my goodness, I sweat so bad. In my head, I got this for my dad, John Marshall. Rest in peace, dad. Rest in peace, dad. But yeah, I sweat so much, so I'm just trying to put some fake hair in my head. Y'all didn't realize how tight I was doing my hair, because now, <laughs> oh my goodness, a few days later, my head is sore. And why in the world am I looking like that? I have no, maybe the sun's just too bright. Because I'm sitting right in front of the window and the sun is real bright. But dad, my eyebrows all up. <laughs> Some sauce, so you know what time it is. What time is it? Bed's time. <laughs> That's right. Bed's time. Well, you smell good, girl. What you got on? Victoria's Secret. Oh, she got a Victoria's Secret. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so here I have in my hand, I have Javoy for HIV, Simbalta for depression and anxiety. Javoy, Simbalta, Javoy, 
Okay, here we go. She really didn't want to say it. <laughs> Mm. This is good. Sugar free, by the way. All right, what I want to read, just a little something, something, something. All right, this is com coming from Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 1 through uh, 3. I'm so sorry if y'all hear some noise in the background. But here we go. No confidence in the flesh. Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision. We who serve God by his spirit who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. That was Philippians 3, 1 through 3. Okay? And that was my dog drinking out of her water bowl. So, that's all I have for you today. Say happy early birthday to Brianna. She gonna be 17. She gonna be 17. Tomorrow. She gonna be 17. She gonna be 17. Tomorrow. Okay, so that's it. And um, if you have anything to say, leave a comment. Comment, comment, comment. Let me know. Let me know what else you want me to read. Just let me know, okay? All right, so Brianna, that's it. And now it's your turn. It is you equals you. You are responsible for your own actions. All right, see ya. Walking outside, walking back home from the store with the birthday girl tomorrow. <laughs> she said tomorrow. I spent some of my birthday money. I got early. You spent it all? No, I got three left. Okay. So I think I say that to go with my um fees for like yeah yeah look. No. <laughs> you don't want to pick it up. <laughs> Not the other soccer's doing it. Hi. Right. Well, you ain't over there eating that gum, Doogie. There's some gum on the bed, Doogie. Get that gum, Doogie. You see that girl? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. I'm just here trying to read the Bible on my computer. Hey, y'all. I wanted to read something to y'all. And this is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It's waving rights for the gospel. It's a couple of uh, chapters, no, verses. It's a couple of paragraphs in here that I wanted to read to y'all, okay? It's called Waving Rights for the Gospel. And I'm reading this out of the CEB version, Common English Bible, okay? Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus our Lord? Aren't you my work in the Lord? If I'm not an apostle to others, at least I am to you. You are the seal that shows I'm an apostle. This is my defense against those who criticize me. Okay, now this is Paul who's actually writing to the Corinthians, okay? Don't we have the right to eat and drink? Don't we have the right to travel with a wife who believes like the rest of the apostles? the lord's brothers and cyphers or is it only i and barnabas who don't have the right to not work for our living 
who joins the army and pays their own way? Who plants a vineyard and doesn't eat it, eat its fruit? Who shepherds a flock and doesn't drink its milk? I'm not saying these things just based on common sense. Am I? Am I? Doesn't the law itself say these things? In Moses' law, it's written, you will not muzzle the ox when it is threshing. That means you won't put a muzzle on the animal when it's threshing. They got to eat while they working, right? Right. Okay, so is God worried about oxen or did he say this entirely for our sake? It was written for our sake because the one who plows and the one who threshes should each do so with the hope of sharing the produce. If we sow spiritual things in you, it is so much to ask to harvest some material things from you. Okay, now that was chapter 9, 1 through 11. And we're going to start with 12. If others have these rights over you, don't we deserve them all the more? However, we haven't made use of this right. But we put up with everything so we don't put any obstacles in the way of the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple get to eat food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share part of what is sacrificed at the altar? In the same way, the Lord commanded that those who preach and gospel, the gospel, let me repeat that. The Lord commanded that those who preach the gospel should get their living from the gospel. But I haven't taken advantage of this. And I'm not writing this so that it will be done for me. It's better for me to die than to lose my right to brag about this. If I preach the gospel, I have no reason to brag since I'm obligated to do it. I'm in trouble if I don't preach the gospel. If I do this voluntarily, I get rewarded for it. But if I'm forced to do it, then I've been charged with a responsibility. What reward do I get? That when I preach, I offer the good news free of charge. That's why I don't use the rights to which I'm entitled through the gospel. Although I'm free from all people, I make myself a slave to all people to recruit more of them. I act like a Jew to the Jews so I can recruit Jews. I act like I'm under the law to those under the law so I can recruit those who are under the law, though I myself am not under the law. I act like I'm outside the law to those who are outside the law. So I can recruit those outside the law, though I'm not outside the law of God, but rather under the law of Christ. I act weak to the weak, so I can recruit the weak. I have become all things to all people, so I could save some by all possible means. All the things I do are for the sake of the gospel, so I can be a partner with it. Don't you know that all the runners in the stadium run, but only one gets the prize? So run to win. Everyone who competes practices self-discipline in everything. The runners do this to get a crown of leaves that shrivel up and die. But we do it to receive a crown that never dies. So now... This is how I run, not without a clear goal in sight. I fight like a boxer in the ring, not like someone who is shadow boxing. Rather, I'm landing punches on my own body and subduing it like a slave. I do this to be sure that I myself won't be disqualified after preaching to others. So this is what I read, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 waving rights for the gospel and they do have a footnote the footnote is 1 corinthians 9 9 deuteronomy 25 
four. All right. So that's what I wanted to read to you. And I read that from the CEB. That is the Common English Bible Version. Okay. If you want some more, let me know. <laughs>
Look, that was my daughter. I'm ready to move back to where I came from before I moved over here because this area is a rough area. And I've been praying, asking God, asking God to help. Please, if it's in your will, let us go back to where we had came from. And that's in Marietta. That's the city of Marietta, which is in Cobb County. So the area I'm in now is a rough neighborhood. I didn't grow up in a rough neighborhood. I don't want to die in a rough neighborhood, you know, but I don't know where I'm going to die. Nobody knows when, where, and how. Yesterday, somebody got shot right across the street. You see several cop cars, ambulance, fire truck, all that. Then you have some cops coming around here in our, in our apartment complex saying, did you hear any gunshots? You all right? You okay? She just got out of the chair. But anyway, making all that noise. But yeah, so we hear gunshots in this neighborhood all the time. Too many times. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. No, I'm ready to go. For real, I'm ready to go. And, but yeah, um, I just want, you know, just to talk to you and let you know how, how I'm doing and you know, where I am in my head right now. I mean, I've been reading the Bible a lot and learning a lot. Today I got confirmation. And I know it was from God. I got confirmation. Stop eating meat. Stop eating meat. And the only thing I have to do is learn how to prepare my food and buy foods that's not meat and prepare my foods that's going to taste good. Okay. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Lots of fruits and vegetables. So this is confirmation today that I got from an Uber driver. No more meats. Cut it out. Because I did go on a meatless diet for like seven days. And I felt so light. I felt great. And then I started back. And when you living in a household with people that like meat, it's hard. But you know what? It's a mind thing. And I know I can do it. I can do it. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to prove to you I'm going to do it. Starting today, I'm going to do it. I will be coming on more often. You know, about my life. Talking about my life in different situations. You know. Confirmation was the big thing today that really got to me. The confirmation. Anything that God put in front of my face, in my ears, in my head. I listen and I pay attention. So confirmation today, no meats. And I remember Elder Adrian at my church, Bridgepoint Church, talking about cut that meat out. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Um, well, right now, and I'll talk to y'all later. Right now, I'm separating the bad broccoli from the good broccoli, and I'm just going to get some broccoli with a little um, dressing on it. That's it. No meat. From my doctor's office just picked up my prescription it's a uh, gabapentin what i picked up for my back it's for my muscles in my back yeah muscles nerves all that so i'm just waiting for my ride i got a ride to come pick up my prescription and now i'm getting a ride to go back home isn't it sweet Nice, nice, nice. See you in a little bit. I woke up today with a good head on my shoulder. Yep, yep, yep. Good head on my shoulder. I actually had a dream and it woke me up. Y'all know the devil try and get you in your dream as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And if you act on that dream, then he got you. But I'm not acting on that dream. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Ooh, I'm riding in a Tesla today, y'all. When I woke up and I had that dream, and I was like, you know what, devil, you're not going to get me. So I said, Jesus will work it out. And that's what I started talking about. Jesus will work it out. Because he will. He can work it out. Everything. And when you are tempted, he will show, make sure that he'll get you out. He'll work it out where you can endure it. Yes, he will. He'll work it out where you can endure it. All right, my ride is here. Talk to you later. Bye. Boy, this man was driving so fast in his brand new Tesla holding his phone because he had to charge his phone up so he didn't want to mess up his cord if he laid his phone down. So yeah, we was flying. Did the car just tell you the light turned green? Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You've tried that?
right, y'all, I'm back. Back from that fast ride in the Tesla. Boy, he was flying. Flying all the way to my destination. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But oh well. <laughs> 